Welcome everyone to this lecture where we're going to be discussing word to vec which is a really awesome algorithm or model that ends up embedding words into a vector of space. So we understand how to work with time series data. So we're going to take a look at another common series data source, which is just words. So we can think of words in a sentence as a sequence. So for example, a sentence can be thought of as a sequence like, hi, how are you? Now in classic natural language processing, words are typically replaced by numbers, and it indicates some sort of frequency relationship to their documents. And in doing this approach, we end up losing information about the relationship between the words themselves. So we can think of natural language processing as having two approaches, either a count-based approach or a predictive-based approach. So basically, count-based methods compute the statistics of how often some words co-occur with its neighbor words in a large text corpus. And then they end up mapping these count statistics down to a small dense vector for each word, essentially replacing the words with numbers. Now, predictive models directly try to predict the word from its neighbors in terms of learned small dense embedding vectors. And these are then considered the parameters of the model. So word to vec is gonna take a predictive based approach where neighboring words are predicted based off the vector space instead of doing a classical count-based approach where we essentially lose that sort of information. So we're gonna explore one of neural networks most famous use cases for this predictive based approach for natural language processing, which is the word to vec model created by Thomas Mikulov. And again, the goal of word to vec model is to learn word embeddings by modeling each word as a vector in some n-dimensional space. And later on, we'll see that we actually have the capability to define how large of a dimensional space we want. So when we actually code this out, we're gonna define each word as a vector in a 150 dimensional space. So the question arises, what is our actual motivation behind using word embeddings instead of just this count approach that we discussed earlier? Well, if we think about the representation of data across various data sources, such as audio images or text, if we think about audio and images, these happen to be really rich, high dimensional data sets that are also very dense in their information. So you can have things like an audio spectrogram or image pixels, and these are really dense data sets. However, when you take approach like a count based approach to text data, you end up getting a very sparse data set. So for tasks like object or speech recognition, we actually already know that all the information required to successfully perform the task is encoded in the data. And we actually know this because humans themselves can perform tasks from the raw data. You can read a sentence and understand the meaning behind it. However, natural language processing systems that traditionally treat words as discrete symbols will end up not being able to understand this information. So what I mean by that is a word such as cat is gonna be represented as some number, like word 537, and a word as such as dog is gonna be represented as some other number, like ID 127 or something of that nature. So you end up getting these arbitrary encodings that don't actually provide any useful information to the system regarding the relationships that may exist between those individual words or symbols. So you don't get to realize that dogs and cats are similar because they're both animals, they're both popular as pets, they both have four legs, etc. You lose that information about the relationship between these words. Instead, you just get information about the relationship of the frequency of these words showing up in a document. So word to vec tries to solve this problem by creating a vector-spaced model that represents, or in other words, embeds the words into a continuous vector space. With the words represented as vectors, we can then actually do really cool things like perform vector mathematics on words, which is kind of a crazy idea when you really think about it. So what that actually means is because each of these words is a vector, you can do things like check how similar two vectors are to each other using something like cosine similarity, which means you can check how close and how similar two words are to each other. And then what's really cool is you can actually add and subtract vectors together, meaning that once you actually embed these words as vectors, you could technically add and subtract words to get different results. So at the start of training, what happens is each embedding is random, but through back propagation in the model, we end up adjusting the value of each word vector in the given number of dimensions. So you slowly begin to adjust these vectors for these words. And more dimensions does mean more training time, but it also means more information per word. 
So what ends up happening is each dimension sometimes represents some sort of idea. So similar words will end up being closer together as their vectors are slowly brought closer together. And what's even more impressive, as I mentioned, the model is going to end up producing axes that represent concepts or ideas. So they may be a dimension that represents gender or another dimension for verbs, singular versus plural, etc. So what does this actually result in? Well, you can end up plotting out the vectors and performing mathematics on them. So maybe you'll end up realizing that you can have two words such as man and king and realize that along a particular dimension they have their gender counterpart such as woman and queen. So a lot of times there's a famous example where someone says uh, king minus man plus woman and the vector that's output is queen. So you can see that the model is actually learning the relationship and even the meaning behind some of these words. And then there's other dimensions such as understanding verb tense, so walking to walked or swimming to swam. And then you end up getting a relationships between just even geographical locations. So the model will end up understanding that Madrid is related to Spain, Rome is related to Italy, etc., just based off the neighboring words, which kind of makes sense because as you read some large corpus of text, you're more likely to find Berlin very close to the word Germany. And you're more likely to find the word Tokyo very close to the word Japan. So those vectors end up having a relationship. Now let's actually discuss how word to vec actually creates these word embeddings and how it learns these from raw text. So word to vec actually comes in two flavors, if you will, and that is the continuous bag of words model and the skip gram model. And algorithmically speaking, the models are really similar, except in the way that they end up predicting target words. So let's actually first take a look at this bottom continuous bag of words approach. So the bag of words approach basically takes in source context words, such as the dog choose the, and then it attempts to find its prediction target, which is just a single word. So that target word may be something like bone. So you feed in the dog choose the, and it ends up trying to find the best target fit as just an individual word. And in that case, it could be something like a bone. The skip gram model, that one on the top, does the exact inverse. So it predicts source context words from the target words. So you end up feeding it bone, and it tries to predict the context around it, such as the dog choose the. So for the most part, this turns out to be uh, useful for larger data sets. And the continuous bag of words approach tends to be better for smaller data sets. And that's usually because, statistically speaking, the bag of words is going to smooth over a lot of the distributional information. And it does that by treating an entire context as one observation. So again, bag of words tends to be a little better for smaller data sets. OK, so let's go ahead and basically talk about how it actually trains the model. And it does this by something called noise contrastive training. So the way this works, if we think about the bag of words approach, is that given the dog choose the blank, we're looking for the word that's going to be the real target word. So we'll call that W of T. And we know the real target word is bone. And then we also have a bunch of noise words throughout our document, such as book, car, house, son, guitar. So we're looking for the word that's most likely to fit there as the target. So if we were to visualize this, it would look something like this. So again, word to vec doesn't actually need a full probabilistic model. Instead, what we end up doing is we use a binary classification objective, such as a logistic regression, to discriminate the real target words, that is W of T, from imaginary noise words, we'll call those K, in the same context. So this is basically a simple visualization where we have our projection layer, the cat sits on the blank, so Matt in this case, so Matt's the target word, and we're going to have some sort of noise classifier, just a binary classification, where we compare that target word versus the rest of these noise words. And then we pass that in through some hidden layers, and eventually we get some sort of embeddings. So our training process is going to be noise contrastive training, where we're basically contrasting the noise versus the actual target word. So the target word is predicted by maximizing this equation right here. And don't worry too much about memorizing every little detail here. Instead, try to understand the basic idea. So let's look at that first term of the equation. So that first term is the binary logistic regression probability under the model of seeing the word W or W of T in the context H for some data set capital D. And it's calculated in terms of the learned embedding vectors theta. 
So in practice, we approximate the expectation by drawing k contrastive words from the noise distribution. So note here, we're only drawing k words. We're not drawing the entire corpus of text data. Instead, we're just drawing a certain amount of words from the noise distribution. So this works really well for us because computationally, it's really efficient because now we're just computing the loss function and it scales only to the number of noise words that we select, that is that K number, not all the words in the vocabulary, which would be, let's say capital V or something of that nature. So that makes it a lot faster to train because we're only drawing K words as our noise words instead of drawing and comparing to the entire vocabulary. So that's what makes word to vec computationally efficient for the task it's actually doing. Now again, the larger the amount of K words you end up drawing, the longer your training time is gonna take, but that should then make it more accurate to predict the target word versus a wide variety of noise words. However, you'll see, you can get really reasonable results for smaller values of K. So again, the goal is to assign high probability to correct words and low probability to noise words. Then once you've ran through this model process, you'll have vectors for each word. And what's really cool is you can visualize the relationships through some sort of uh, dimension reduction. And a really popular one, especially for word to vec, is T distributed stochastic neighbor embedding. So in our practice, we're gonna have each vector be represented by 150 dimensions. And then we're gonna use this process to reduce it down to two. So then we just have these words represented by two dimensional vectors, which means we can then plot them out because we have two coordinates per word. So that ends up giving you something that looks like this. So this is actually the final plot we'll be creating. And hopefully we'll end up realizing that points that are close to each other tend to have some similarity. All right, let's get started. In the next lecture, we'll code out the word to vec model.